Hello and greetings, fellow Pixel Train enthusiasts. Welcome to another Train Sim Classic video. Today we've got the Tennessee Pass. Uh, now this is by Milepost Simulations, which uh, recently brought us the Rio Grande Southern, Arizona Divide, uh, the Mount Shasta Line, all kinds of fairly, fairly nice routes, uh, all things considered. But this is out now. It's available. It is $39.99. Uh, so you can't see the price because I've already purchased it here in my account. Well, there you can, right there. Yeah, $39.99, still $40. Bucks. That hasn't changed much. Uh, I wish it would go down. That'd be very, very nice. But uh, with this, you're going to get the Alco L1312882 articulated locomotive. And then, of course, you're going to get some Rio Grande uh, skinned F7s and GP7s as well. It's a bunch of stock. Uh, I think... I think it was a couple of gigabytes. I don't know if I had like a, a train sim classic update or patch as well. I remember seeing it was like a gig or two. But uh, anyway, it's Tennessee Pass, the famed Tennessee Pass, square in the heart of Colorado, and absolutely nothing to do with the state of Tennessee for those unaware. It's basically named after a creek, which was called Tennessee Creek. Anyway, let's let's start looking at stuff. Odalie K, here we are. We are down at the very southern end of the map. Almost square in central Colorado, anyway. Again, this is Tennessee Pass, built by Milepost Simulations, following the Rio Grande Southern Mount Shasta Line and Arizona Divide, which uh, JL, a.k.a. Milepost Simulations, recently made, which is very nice as well. Now, the highest standard grade line in the U.S. is this, the Tennessee Pass Line, at 10,221 feet above sea level. Now this portion of the line runs 62 miles from Buena Vista to Mintern, uh, which are both in Colorado of course, along the the Leadville branch which is kind of in the middle almost at the pass itself which is a, a huge mining area or it was anyway back in the day. I think it's got about five or six miles that you can mess around with as well. You're going to get a steam diesel transition era uh, fleet rolling stock wise the L131-2882 uh, the F7 GP7, and it should include uh, absolute block signals and CTC or centralized traffic control as far as signaling as well. And in the scenarios, you get the uh, the handwritten orders, which is kind of cool, just a, a little neat spin on things. But uh, you'll also note that, let me open that, that'd probably be a, a fantastic idea. You'll also note that, just like the Rio Grande Southern, um, nope, don't, don't want the Transom Classic video playing um just like rio grande southern mike rennie aka smokebox had to do with uh sorry just just opening the manuel here there we go boom boom all right so smokebox did the physics apparently for this as well as you'll note in the manual which we are in here uh, down here, root and L131 created by Jonathan Lewis, uh, physics by Mike Rennie, track provided by Rick Grout. That's why the track's so nice. I thought it looked good. Uh, and some rolling stock provided by Michael Stefan. So that's a lot of your freeware stuff that uh, ends up in a lot of the high iron slash DTM stuff, which, you know, it is freeware. It's old. We won't get into that, but, you know, it's here. It's pretty much the only era appropriate stock we have. Sadly, it'd be nice to have some, some good payware stuff, but it is what it is. And then just like the Rio Grande Southern, uh, Michael Cam, a.k.a. Fan Railer, uh, I think did the whistle sounds, which we will all hear in due time. Anyway, spiel continuing. It's always good to have a little backstory or information that, you know, for those that may not be fully aware, or you might learn something new. With me, though, honestly, probably not. You guys know a lot more than I do, that's for sure. So the Tennessee Pass Line was initially a narrow gauge line built by the Denver and Rio Grande, or Rio Grande as they were known, DNRGW, W's for the Western. That was in 1881 in the literal heart of Colorado, the great state, square state of Colorado that we're currently in now in this route, of course. Now... The line started as kind of an essential mining branch line, uh, which eventually got fully fleshed out due to competing railroads because it was just that time. So let's see, I'm trying to think. That's hard. I know it. Where did that? I can't remember where they ended it. I want to say it was up near Leadville, possibly, but they, they furthered it, uh, obviously, competing with the Colorado Midlands 
Railroad, which was a standard gauge uh, railway. So about by 1890, uh, the new standard gauge line was built over the uh, original narrow gauge. So this, in its form, uh, in the way it's built by milepost, is in the standard gauge, uh, obviously. So the line was built from Pueblo to Grand Junction. Now, Pueblo is going to be down behind us here and uh, kind of goes off to the east. And then the line continues northern up to uh, the mighty Grand Junction. Um, so basically all you know efforts were shared with the Colorado Midlands to build the tunnel at the pass, which is at 10,221 feet. Uh, so they kind of combined efforts and stopped fighting over the line because railroads did fight over the line. Um, now, sadly, this line does not include the Royal Gorge. It'd probably be a good idea to take a look at the map here. Royal Gorge is going to be like over this way in real life. Uh, but sadly, we don't get that. We get uh, this this little bit here. I want to say it's like 62 miles plus the Leadville branch. And we are currently down here. So Grand Junction would have been right about here. And then Pueblo would have been right around over here. So we just get this bit in the middle. No Royal Gorge. It is very sad. But uh, anywho. So 60 years went by. Uh, after the combination of efforts between the railroads and they built a new tunnel uh, with a larger bore. Now in this, you will see the two tunnels side by side, one being derelict, of course, and the one that is, you know, used on the main line uh, and so forth, I guess. So once the Moffat Tunnel um, further to the north and Dotsero Cutoff were built, the pass became a secondary line, essentially. Um, you know, not only more direct, but less of a grade. So Moffitt was on average, I think about 2% through the Moffitt Tunnel. And then uh, the Tennessee Pass, the western side of the Tennessee Pass anyway, the western slope was about 3%. Um, so it just seemed a bit more direct and they, they kind of stopped using it for a while. Southern Pacific came along naturally and acquired the DNRGW in the late 80s and basically fired the pass back up again and started using it as their uh, main transcon effectively along with donner pass naturally so a lot of the cool video you know you'll see to this very day on youtube and beyond is a lot of cool you know sp stuff on the line which is very very nice very good looking southern pacific with the bloody noses now the union pacific obviously took hold over the sp they switched back to the friggin moffett tunnel routing instead of tennessee pass and it lied dormant and quiet once again kind of like right now since there's no rolling stock on screen but uh the last running of this uh great very highest standard gauge pass in the u.s was in i want to say about 1997 it was the late 90s. Now, another cool little note about the Tennessee Pass. It is on the list of highest rail passes in the world. And I don't know where it sits in that list. I want to say it's like 6th or 7th. It might be 30th. I don't know. But it's somewhere in there. But uh, the line, you know, remains to this day, obviously. But may likely never see revenue service ever ever again now there is a dozen miles through the royal gorge to the east which is ran with excursion trains and the like and then i remember seeing something in the news about some billionaire up in this area that kind of wanted to buy rights uh from up to open the line back up and they fought back and it's not going to happen or you know i don't know haven't been following it too too closely but enough spielage about the railroad itself all right then guys well first things first we're going to go over the route uh and just look it over going to jump around a lot of it's in the middle of nowhere so we're not going to look at every freaking inch or millimeter of the line itself but we'll kind of hop around to some more notable areas now we are currently in buena vista again i'll pop the map open here at the very southern tip so this is buena vista this is the Leadville branch and Leadville up here, and then Minturn is up yonder, which is right there. So we are currently at the very south end of the line, and we'll just kind of go over a bit, look at you know, look around, see what's what. So Buena Vista, Colorado, which is this little town here, still exists to this very day, one of the largest in the area. Um, basically settled along the Arkansas River. So yes, it's weird. A lot of you that may not be familiar with Americana naming other states and states of 
places of other states and things like that. So we got Tennessee Pass, Arkansas River, and on and on it goes. Now, the Arkansas is a tributary, part of the headwater of the mighty Mississippi River. So that's where that goes. And uh, a lot of settlers back in the day just kind of settled here because it was a, a fertile, lush valley um, to farm. You know, good soil right along the river, flowing water for everything you needed back then, yada, yada. I think it settled in about, it's like Civil War era. I want to say the 1860s at some point. But the elevation here, and it may look kind of weird because, again, those you know possibly unfamiliar with the area, is we're currently at 8,000 feet above sea level. Now, I live at sea level, uh, IRL. So to just look at this and think, oh, it's just a wide open valley, kind of looks like Southern California or something like that. Uh, it's not. You're still very, very high in the air. So that would have been, you know, a lot more just grunt that these locomotives diesel and steam had to put out being uh, that high above sea level of course where the air was super super thin compared to you know 3,000 and below just wanted to point that out of course so the Rio Grande and Denver South Park Pacific competed here with their rail lines, of course, hauling minerals from the Leadville, which is a branch up to the north there, uh, along with produce from valleys and crops all in this area, and uh, kind of expanded the town to, to get it to its largest point um, in the day. So just a tiny, tiny bit about Buena Vista. This is where your activities will start if you purchase the route and, uh, you know, run trains up to Minturn and beyond. Uh, at first glance, this looks like a milepost route, and that's not inherently a bad thing. Um, I, f I feel like the milepost routes are definitely some of the better looking. I mean, just look at that vista right there. Some of the better looking, um, you know, routes for North American content for sale on the Steam store. Uh, sadly, not competing with too many other route makers besides like High Iron and Dovetail. Uh, currently, who knows? That may change in the future, but... You know, the milepost stuff has always looked uh, very nice. I feel like he does topography very well, uh, the land itself, and then the, you know, the, the shrubbery and the bushes, the vegetation, things like that, always look really decent on milepost route. He's, he seems to, to capture the actual area of, of where these places are at. Now, we're in central Colorado, and you might be thinking, if you're not familiar with Colorado, you know, sky high, snow capped pointy you know rockies and snow skiing and you know dense chaparral trees and all that it's all of colorado does not look like that this is more like it's you know it's almost kind of like some some northern new mexico look to it so it's even with some sprinklings of you know utah in there or something like that so it looks pretty darn legit um it looks pretty good so he always captures the look of the area fairly fairly well now this right here is the arkansas river of course which i was talking about a moment ago not a lot has changed sadly with the way um you know a lot of milepost rivers and bodies of waters look they're just very super clean you know the edging from from the banks to the water itself now it is colorado it's not going to be like here in florida where it's just a mess of you know nasty bushes you know bug riddled trees just draping off into the water uh, it's a bit more rocky, arid, a bit more dry, but still, it looks it looks a little funny. It almost looks like man-made, you know, some of these bodies of water. Uh, if if we could just maybe dot some some big boulders here and there, a couple of you know pieces of scrub, things like that, just freshen it up a little bit. Um, that aside, one of the things I do like about the milepost routes is is the vegetation. So a lot of the high iron routes use that old, old vegetation with the trees that look like Krusty the Clown's head. And it just, it's not a good look. Now this is, he's used this in pretty much everything though. By he, I mean JL, milepost. Uh, Shasta, uh, Arizona Divide, Rio Grande Southern. But it, it kind of fits the area and it does look good. Some of these trees look very good. Uh, as do the bushes as well. I feel like I spotted possibly a new tree earlier. Um, it's not those. We'll see. It's it's kind of like one of these, like a coniferous tree. Um, but it, it looked really good. I'd, I'd not noticed it before. But anyway, enough about freaking trees. 
vegetation does make a huge, huge difference, though, with the way some of these roots look. I mean, look at the shadows just draping and streaming across that bush in itself. And as long as it's, you know, line side 3D, that's fine, and then farther off 2D, but, but not like AI-generated 2D where it just looks like a wall and looks like ass. Um, like some roots, but the only thing about the vegetation suite with this root is these like weird grapevine looking leaf trees. Uh, I've never been a fan of these. They just look super weird and they stand out. See how much brighter they are. Uh, they, they really, really stand out. This right here looks really damn natural. Uh, it's a good looking tree. I don't know if he's used that tree before. Some of these look pretty good here on tree chat with schnauzer powers. Yeah. Enough about trees. Buena Vista. Now, Buena Vista translates loosely, I think, in Spanish to good view or something like that. That's basically what it means. And it, it is a hell of a view looking around, man. Those towering mountains. Just to think you're already 8,000 feet on the damn ground. And then you look at those mountains. And you're like, man, that's got to be tough to breathe up there. A lot of the stuff like Rio Grande Southern is... Some of it's reused, uh, and there are some new bits you'll tell with a lot of milepost stuff, but this does look pretty good overall. Um, it looks like you've got the appropriate, you know, switch stands and signage, which are, you know, they're not just white signs with nothing on there. They actually say property at Rio Grande Railroad. Uh, you got your platform, but there's some things that just look too, you know, sharp. Little things like this. Maybe maybe put like a, a line of like fill along the edges of this just so it's not like a straight line down into the ground. Same with the buildings. Throw some bushes around the buildings. Just make it look lived in. Make it look real. Um, you know. It's a uh, outhouse or a porta potty. I'm kidding. That's very likely not what that is. You'll also note the tracks. So he was able to use the tracks from Rick Grout. Uh, who made the likes of Stephen pa Stevens Pass, for example, which do look really good. And I think we have a new fill down here as well, which I like it. I like the color of it. Now, up here it looks kind of weird because it's that, like, really dark, you know, somewhat high res, and then whatever the hell this is. Um, it's, it's too distinct. Now, the further we get down the line, because I've already kind of taken a peek. I couldn't help myself. Uh, you'll see some really nice road beds i think he did he did a really damn good job with some of the road beds further down you can kind of see uh you know in here a little bit this this meshes a lot a lot better as you can tell but uh the tracks do look really good buena vista got all kinds of different types of signage and signaling it's in the manual uh that explains everything now we know from years past i don't know i've just been told i'm not gonna lie that the signaling doesn't always work very well with a lot of milepost stuff. So I'm, you know, I'm not going to have any clue as far as that for you scenario makers. Uh, but let's hope not. You do see a lot of reused buildings in here. He did reuse a lot of stuff from Dovetail Games. So a lot of these types of buildings like this, uh, I'm pretty sure are going to be straight Dovetail Games. Some of them look a little different and new um, and possibly even mixed together. Uh, maybe not. I don't remember that uh, balcony around this type of building here. Yeah, maybe he did make some of these. I'm not sure. He also made Wasatch as well. The big uh, UP line. Milepost did. You got some nice little neighborhoods over here as well. It looks It looks sharp. You know, some places it looks very natural. Like all this brush and dry grass through here up to the track side. That looks spiffy. I like the way that looks. And as long as you don't stray too far from the line itself, you know, it generally looks like that. It generally looks good. Got your big old water tower there and the station. So it's a nice, nice, nice little station model. Um, you know, could use some some little bits of customization. Uh, just add, you know, add a barrel on the ground or a sack of flour or something like that. You know, it's a... It's an old-timey rail station. Just just put something up there. It's got Buena Vista on there as well as the semaphores, which you'll see going right through the building here. So, yeah, this is Buena Vista. So, it's kind of funny. You know, these. this is a somewhat decently sized yard. There's like one or two industries down here. So, it's kind of funny that this was chosen to start or end the route, depending on where you're looking at it. And the other one being Minturn. Minturn is pretty darn big. Um, so this down here is just, 
it's kind of funky it would have been cool if it went all the way to pueblo but that would have been a very very long route you can see a few things that don't look too spicy like this alien technology floating house which should have been lowered into the terrain you know stuff like that i get it making a route is not easy i know there's people that toil over them by themselves for years and years and years and years because some people are perfectionists you know generally modders and then you got other people that want to quickly release something get it through dovetail games as i'm going to do air quotes qa control um and just you know boom 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 quickly play stuff down don't really look at it or pay attention and then you end up with shit like that so that's not very nice um so yeah there's not much else to look at through here here's one of the industries here we'll pop the map up and take a look i have no clue what that is this isn't like rio grand southern where there's just like a whole boatload of information out there easy to find you know um it's just you know it's tennessee pass everybody knows tennessee pass but really just the pass not the area itself you know so what is this warehouse okay so it's just a warehouse yeah okay cool and you'll see some of these uh these what kind of bushes are these now i saw these and i was like man are these new bushes and they're not they're groupings of bushes because i was like those you know those look pretty good from a distance they got that that kind of high mountain high dry mountain look the uh what is it what is it with mountains whether it's, it's called like the leeward side where you'll get rain and then the, the non-rain side this is kind of like the non-rain side uh, and so it's more dry, but those suckers look big. They look pretty good. Um, but I guess they're like placed down in little groups, which is pretty neat because it makes them look different, makes them look bigger. Uh, anywho, so this line follows along basically the Arkansas River, which you can see down here. Now, this looks pretty good through here, some of it anyway, <laughs> until you look real close. Uh, it looks a little bit more natural. You got different kinds of, you know, rock and geography fill or whatnot there. Uh, you got some of these old school like rock faces, kind of like in Wasatch in the uh, uh, the the Salt Lake lines. I forget the name that uh, Dovetail Games made. So you'll see a lot of that here and there. There is some 2D trees, but they're at a distance and they look totally fine. I've got no problem with that whatsoever. It's all about how they're placed and where they're put. Now this is some of the uh, the track laying and the fill which I was talking about. That looks really good. I mean, look at the blend. It's stark on here, right? Because of the, generally the crap they would have been hauling, dumping, you know, dumping over the side and just kind of dirty or whatever fill they got it from, whatever quarry. And, uh, you know, it just could have been that certain color. That's typically why these look the way they do in real life. But uh, it's, it's pretty nicely fleshed out here. I mean, look how smooth that is. And it blends in with this down here. Um, it just looks, looks really good. It's probably one of the best... Uh, you know, ways, uh, you know, right away, um, that I think has been in any milepost route. And then you've got to look at stuff like that as well, which doesn't blend very well, but, uh, yeah. So this line essentially was built along the Arkansas river, as you'll see here, it, it, I mean, it, the river naturally made the valley. So why not build a road or a railroad against that, which is what, of course, a lot of engineers and surveyors and people did, and still do so this line essentially follows the arkansas river up to the tippy tippy top of the pass and then it turns into another river because it's it's the headwaters up there for a couple of different rivers but it looks pretty darn good i mean it's you know it's wide open there's not a whole whole lot to see or talk about really it's uh you know it's kind of like another rio grande southern or wasatch if you've got those for transom classic you've got the nice uh, rio grande bridge here now i think it might not be this one. In real life, one of these says Rio Grande on it still to this day um, on the side. I don't know if it's this one. or I think it's actually one further north. But the uh, the bridge looks pretty good. I mean, the placement looks pretty clean. The colors look nice. It's not too wild or, you know, too desaturated or oversaturated or anything like that as far as the way the, the bridge itself looks. Um, you know, you got some big old rocks to help prevent washouts and things like that. First bridge looks pretty good. All right, so following the line in the river itself, we come to a really cool little spot. These are called the Midlands Tunnels, and you can probably guess why. Colorado Midlands competing railroad back in the day. Old roadbed. You can tell it's a roadbed. Uh, you know, of course, just the way that it looks. 
But uh, the tunnels here are really cool. So they remain to this day. And uh, it's just a funky little thing. You can go and hike. I don't know if you can drive through it, but I know you can hike through it and all that good stuff. But they basically follow right down the way. Um, and that looks pretty good. All that's placed really, really well. Even the way the, uh, the telegraph poles are placed. It looks really neat. Neat little, neat little stuff like that. Of course, you've got the uh, actual posts themselves. And then you got another tunnel down yonder. And there's kind of this little bit right here between the rock. I don't know if they broke that or not. And it was possibly like a cave in. It kind of has that look. But you basically just follow the Arkansas River, which kind of will meander away uh, several times. Um, let's see. Is this? That might be the new tree. I've never seen this tree before, but it looks pretty good. Yeah, I know some people could give a flip about vegetation and stuff like that, but to me, it's it's huge for uh, root building, and we need some stuff like that that's not a hundred years old anymore. We need we need some freshness. That looks pretty good. It may have been used elsewhere. I don't know, but it looks good. I've never noticed it before. Got a big old sighting right here. This is Americus. There's also an Americus in Georgia. It's like a little engine turnaround right there. We'll keep scooching. Now, this is a gradual incline. Like I said before, it, it just looks like a wide open valley, but you are on a gradual incline up to the pass itself. Got an old truss bridge here again, which uh, embankments look pretty good, except for that. I spotted that. That could have been filled in. Throw a couple rocks there or something. Got the nice sound of soothing sound of flowing water. And we'll continue on. And it's going to be pretty darn wide open. So uh, I, I can't think of too much more. Um, obviously, there's little scenes like this farm, which look really nice. Uh, got another box here. What's this? Riverside. Yeah, we'll just keep on scooching. We might just uh, zoop all the way up to the Leadville branch. But uh, it looks good. Visually, I do like the way it looks. Now, I did, and I forgot to mention this at the very beginning, I did install the, uh, or I didn't install, I just clicked and it happened, the uh, Armstrong Powerhouse Weather Enhancement Pack. And it looks pretty good on here. Some routes, it doesn't always look that great. I feel like the milepost routes, it generally looks pretty good and uh, benefits it. If you're fine with the Kuju weather, the, the really old weather, Skybox, good for you. That's up to you. But AP weather does work with this. It's quite easy because... High iron simulations, for whatever reason, the last couple routes they've made, they've removed the time of day file structure within, you know, the 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 route where the uh, you know the data is that you can change to have a better skybox. Uh, they straight up remove that, so you have to do this backwards ass way of you know putting AP weather in, and it's it's total bullshit. It's a real pain in the ass uh, to be very blunt about it. And it's almost like they're doing it on purpose at this point because they want the crappy Kuju skybox. But hey, to each their own, as usual, it's easy to do on this. So you don't have to worry about that like the last high iron stuff. Scooching up the line a little bit towards the Leadville branch. We're currently at Princeton and you can kind of tell we're in a, a bit of a canyon now. Still following the river, of course. A bit more wide open that way. In some uh, instances, you will follow you know, a gorge or a canyon almost like this, which is, you know, pretty neat. It's got some f fairly varied uh, geography from what I've seen so far. And, and and once you go over the pass to the leeward side or whatever that technical specification is called, it does actually look a bit different. So you'll start to notice that, uh, hopefully, as I did. Um, but it, it just looks a bit more dry and kind of like, you know, northern New Mexico or something down here. But uh, still looks pretty good. Um, you know, the, the distant terrain doesn't always play ball. I feel like as of late, I don't know if it's my drive or it's the way that they make these routes. I know there's something you can do in the editor when you're building a route to have stuff pop in sooner or later. You know, the way the LOD works and the distance. Um, and sometimes it looks a bit shit, sadly, I think, because a lot of devs and modders, you know, want everybody to be able to run it, even those with mom's Toshiba. PC from 28 years ago um, you know so it is what it is sadly I wish they'd make stuff for more recent PCs that can maybe handle things that would be nice 
But again, it is what it is. You can still see the old roadbed down here, which is pretty cool. So that's the Midland Railroad roadbed down there. So they literally fought. They were side by side. And they figured, what the hell, guys? Let's go take a look at some trees on the mountainside. Yeah, they didn't figure that, actually. I, I just wanted to look at those trees. Yeah, they, they combined efforts and you got the line that you got today. You can see some more of the old roadbed there. That's cool. I like the little little bits and bobs like that. I don't know what else is going to really be up here to look at. Look at. Going to try and keep this short and swat. So we might just uh, skadosh on up to uh, Leadville. Oh, man. We got another floating building. Or do we? Is that just dark? Oh, it's yeah, it's just dark. It doesn't look good, though. This is what I'm talking about. I need some kind of fill along here, or some trash or something like that. It says Yale. Another little station. I feel like some of these stations were reused. If they weren't completely reused, they were definitely uh, modeled a little bit differently. Edited. Got the old buck signs. Two types of uh, livestock ramps there. Some of these houses are newer. Uh, and you can definitely see some from other uh, milepost stuff um, who also made uh, Clear Creek for those unaware uh, because in, in some of the photos when they started showing this game off I'll see in some of the cars on the ground and by cars I mean like you know vehicles um, and they look too old because this is supposed to be like late 40s early 50s so this is when cars started getting a bit bigger a bit heavier more you know thick and bulbous and rounded looking like that and not like Model T stuff and I feel like I remember in the initial videos, I did see those really old looking vehicles like that. But now we've got some more normal stuff like a truck like that, for example. You you would have seen something like that in the late 40s. There's some more waterfalls. Sounds anyway, not actually waterfall. You got some water, should you need it along the way. Got a little wash out there. Very cool. Yeah, let's stop dangling around the dangle and uh, get up to Leadville. Or not to Leadville yet, but uh, just look at this. Higher, obviously, probably closer to 9,000 feet now. But this area is huge. Completely wide open. You can hear like a faint sound of a breeze or I don't know if that's a car off in the distance or something, but yeah, this area is huge, and it looks really good. It's it's one of those times where you kind of almost feel like you're there. We got this overpass right here. I'm not sure what highway this is. It's one of the big highways. Uh, geez, I can't remember. It too follows the line, kind of like uh, the river itself, but it looks good. Overpass looks nice. Very nice. Yeah, I think now this is an interstate. That what is it like I forty or something like that? Something. Anyway, let's go to Leadville. Alrighty, boys and girls, welcome to Leadville Junction. So this was what the line was all about. And then, you know, the railroads figured, what the hell, let's keep building it, you know. Let's shake hands on this thing. And then it continued over the pass. But this is where it went, essentially, uh, when it started. So this is the junction. The Tennessee Pass continues on up that way. It's not too much farther, matter of fact. And it's a pretty good sized junction. You've got cool little things here, like the elevated coal gondola dropper doodads. Yeah, not good with specific names sometimes. But uh, that's very cool, looks, looks good. And this is also a free roam, I'd like to mention. Uh, I just loaded in to see what's what. That, of course, is the L131. We're not looking at that yet, though. That's at the end. And a GP7. And then an F7. But uh, all kinds of rolling stock laying around. Plenty of area to move cars. Uh, you know, all the stuff that comes out of the, uh, the branch up here. Nice looking little area, though. This is probably the second biggest area that you'll see uh, on the entirety of the map itself between you know Buena Vista um, you know Minturn here and then uh, like the maybe the Red Red Cliff area up near uh, Minturn 
but we'll go up the branch line. So Leadville is a huge mining town. Very neat little area. It's got a lot of great history. Uh, I think it's at one point it was the second largest town in Colorado behind Denver. And uh, that was a big deal, especially in the 1800s. So Leadville roughly sits at like 10,000 feet. So we're, we're like at the pass, basically. The pass is like, you know, right down there because I think the pass is 10,221 or something like that. But this, the town anyway, sits at about 10,000 feet. And um, yeah, it was titled the, the, the highest incorporated city in the U.S. as well at the time, which is kind of a neat little thing. Um, basically sowing its roots in, in mining at the headwaters of the Arkansas River, which the line followed forever and ever, of course. And uh, now it's just a giant historical landmark. I think they got a couple of museums up here currently in this present day. Um, and yeah, it was the, the second most populated city behind... Denver. I mean, this was Boomtown back in the day. Of course, we're not at the town yet. I know <laughs> we're looking at the line, but we'll get there. These tracks look pretty darn good, man. I tell you, these are some of the best tracks I've seen for sale on Steam in any route in a while. As you can tell, they're a bit darker than the mainline stuff, so it, you know they're a little less used uh, than your than your shiny. Um, you know, kind of chrome mirrored look to a uh, railhead. But I think the color too, man, the, the freaking ballast color looks really damn good. But it's kind of a big horseshoe winding its way up the hill here, as you can see. And it does look good through here as well. Um, you know, this dude does mountains well. Yes, we need other routes that aren't in mountains. That would be fantastic. I feel like everything doesn't need to be uber scenic with mountains and stuff. You know, but... Uh, that's what this is, and that's what we're looking at. So, yeah. Um, but Miles, you know, Milepost does some pretty good high elevation type stuff. So, anywho, Eilers. You can see a lot of the mining operation down there. Oh, son of I'm using the frigging controller right now. How'd it disconnect? This happens every time. I swear to God. I swear to God. It's like Bluetooth just died or something. All right, let's try that again. Okay, let's uh, let's try and edit. All right, and we're back. Battery malfunction. Let's pop the map open. This is where we are. Not quite to uh, level yet. This is Eilers. Huge, huge uh, smelter, peg iron, something like that. So not exactly coal, I don't believe quite yet, but um, they didn't do coal up here. I think it was something along the lines of lead, and that's when I would play a poorly sounding laugh track in the background. Yeah, Leadville. It was uh, it was metals. Huge refinery. I mean, it, <laughs> the area itself doesn't look the best. It's a bit bare, if I'm honest. Like, this is where some of the milepost stuff kind of lacks and where the high iron stuff shines, and that that was very painful to say. Um, you know, it's in yards. Little little things like boxes, barrels, just, just clumps of stuff everywhere. Uh, it needs to be just just muddied up somehow with, with some kind of stuff. Uh, it just looks super bare. It looks unfinished. If I'm honest, but uh, anyway, let's continue. The line snaking its way up. Here's the other old road bed as well, which is pretty cool. I like it. I like it a lot. This is uh, Leadville. Pretty good sized town. And lots of tracks. Here's what I'm talking about. Now, of course, in a big uh, metal yard, iron yard, whatever, lead, you wouldn't exactly have stuff like that, but you can think of other stuff to put around. It's, you know, it's a little bit here, but it's still not quite a lot on the grand scale of things. Uh, but it does look a bit better. We'll zoom over here, little engine heist. If anybody's home, hello. 
Nope. And it looks like two of them put together, doesn't it? I don't remember them being this long. I feel like one in Rio Grande Southern was short. Like it's too smamich together. Yeah, pretty much end of the line. Let's take a look at the map again. We'll go right on up here. Uh, Transload, so it's, you know, trucks, things like that, obviously. We got a Y up here, and then that would go to Climax. There is also a Climax in Georgia. How about that? San Juan Oil Company. I do believe that is from the Rio Grande Southern because of the uh, San Juan Mountains and the little town. I feel like I remember seeing that. Of course, the track ripped up. Not there. So that's the end of the line for the Leadville Branch. So luckily, you know, it's not entirely a one-and-done type route. There is plenty of stuff um you know you can do see the signage on there as well rio grande leadville looks pretty good got some tanks yeah good looking little town though good looking little town and there's stuff you can do here obviously um you know with the yards and the the metal plant smelter i'm gonna call it the right thing one day All right, then, guys, we have departed Lidville, and we are now at the pass. So we'll look back south and kind of show you. This is the name of the pass right here. It's Tennessee Creek, uh, which is a little creek. Starts up in the mountains from, you know, snow melt, rainfall, things like that. That's why it was named what it is. A couple of large, um, you know, passing sightings and things of that nature up here. Trains, you know, lining up, getting ready to shoot the hole. And uh, you do have a Y right here to turn around engines and whatnot, which is very nice. And we are at the tippy tippy, guys. 10,221 feet. I'm pretty sure that's the right footage. I feel like I'm going to remember it. Tennessee Pass on a little building here, which looks good. Still just kind of just, just too, too laboratorial, too clean. You know, need, need stuff around these little buildings and whatnot. Got your signals on the ground there. So over here on the right is the Colorado Midland. Um, I'm pretty sure this is Colorado Midland build the, help build the new tunnel or the first tunnel. I can't remember. It's one of the two. But that's, that's the original tunnel here um, when they joined together. And then 60 years later, uh, they needed a bigger bore, a uh, larger tunnel, i.e., and they built the new one, which you have on the left. So this is the old one to the right. Um you know, which is cool because it's here. And then this is the new one, Tennessee Pass, which should be, I think, engraved or chiseled into there. And you can kind of see that it is in the lettering, which is neat. And it does look a bit different up here. So it's you can tell you're, you're starting to see a lot more trees and these draws in between the mountains, um, you know, which down here in North Carolina and beyond you call a holler. But, uh, you know, you will start to see that. Um, a lot of nice alpine coniferous type trees look pretty good look pretty good it is a lot different looking up here you still have a, a pretty wide open meadow now let's uh let's go through the tunnel shall we it's not super long of course you can throw that's what she said on there here we are on the other side the old boar as well and the new bow and it's spelled right hot darn T-E-N-N-E-S-S-E-E. -E -S -S -E -E. Passe. Got a whistle board down there as well. And it's the other side of the slope, guys. So it starts going down, as you can tell. Maybe you can tell through the video. It is sharp, boys and girls. It goes down a lot sharper on the western side of the slope than it do on the eastern side. Spring switch sign. East Mitchell. Uh-oh. Spelling poo poo. I'm pretty sure it's Mitchell. Maybe it's Smith Cell. I don't know, but uh, it just it doesn't sound right. I'm pretty sure it's Mitchell. Speedboards right here. 22. It's so friggin' weird, man. 22. Just let them do 25, man. It'll be all right. Or 20. 22 is just weird. But yeah, it looks totally different up here. I feel like it looks a lot more lush, a lot darker green. Uh, it just doesn't seem as arid. Got a couple of nice curves. Famed the Mitchell curves. 
in this area on our way to Redcliffe to the north or west in railroad speak. Some of the best, uh, some of the best like views up up on the pass to to catch a train coming down. A lot of a lot of your old photos and videos and things like that. So one spelling mistake, a few floating buildings, and some cleanliness. Um, you know, it's it's not the end of the world. Now that's spelled right, Wes Mitchell. <laughs> Myth cell. I have to remember that. <laughs> I'm going to start calling it Myth Cell. The Myth Cell Curves. Now the spring switch sign. So the spring switch obviously is just as it sounds. It would spring back into place. Uh, we'll keep scooching right along. It looks a lot less kind of wide open through here. Um, ooh, very nice. I like this. this. Some of this is starting to look like Rio Grande Southern map that he made. This would, uh, what were these for? It'd clean like, um, like icicles and, and frozen stuff and what? Is that what that was for? Dean, end of CTC signaling, centralized control. We'll keep on scooching down. Redcliffe shouldn't be too, too, too far. It's a neat little town down here on a very nice curve as well. Um, I don't know what the heck this is. Some kind of military base or something? I, Honestly, no, not. I'm going to assume so, the way the buildings look. Or maybe it's a prison camp. Let's see, what, what's the names? What's, I don't, I honestly don't know what that is. What is it? Uh, where's Mitchell? Level Junction. We already pass it? Yeah, oh God, we're way away. Way away. Idiot. Uh, Dean... So it's oh, Camp Hale. So yeah, it is a big military installation. Very cool. Very cool. Okay. I like it. Very nice. Got a Y there. As you've been right along. A couple of poo-poo and pee-pee water getting turned into clean water. I doubt it. That's very likely for farming irrigation. That's not the best look in there. Oh, nor is it down there. Yikes. Definitely need to uh, space those or, or clean them up. You know, I, I know it's tough in train sim because a lot of these textures are so flipping old. But you know what you can do to hide things like that? Put bushes down. Or anything, really. I mean, but putting a bunch of, like, junked out trucks or cars right there would be weird so i'd probably go with a bush or two those look a lot different starting to look more kind of like rio grande southerny to me and i'm going by other routes that he's built not in real life obviously you know even though rgs is in colorado um it's kind of gotten some wasatch vibes as well which uh milepost made very curvy this is uh, Red Cl or um, yeah, this is Red Cliff. So this this river right here, I forgot to mention earlier. So a bit further south, that's the Arkansas River. When you're on this side of the slope or this side of the pass, that is the Eagle River. Um, and this I think is Red Cliff. And I'm kind of peeved, if I'm honest. There's a big, big old missing thing here, guys. So there's a, there's this huge like pile of rocks in real life that's on this side of the river right here. Um, it's, it's almost like a tiny butte and it's, it's, it's got this, some kind of, I forgot the total story, but it's a, it's, they called it Fort something, but there was a, some kind of Native American battle that took place in the area. Um, yeah, and, and there's just like a big pile of rocks here. So that should be here at least. Um, so that's a bit weird. The side of this mountain doesn't look too great with these 2D trees with how bright they are. Uh, I definitely would not have gone with those. Um, and, and just overall. But I, I know it's hard in Train Sim Classic to do steep gradients like that and have them look good. I mean, it's no excuse, but, uh, you know, I get it. 
So yeah, this is like one of the big curves on the whole line here. It's Red Cliff, little old bridge. It goes across the line. Red Cliff, which is another town, you know, settled along this river during the uh, the Silver Boom, roughly, I want to say late 1800s. And uh, obviously home to a most notable curve of the Tennessee Pace. It looks good through there. Yeah, it's weird. Can't believe that rock isn't there. I forget the name of it. It's Fort something. It's not really a fort. It's just like this giant rock face. It's cool, though. Red Cliff again. A little depot. It's just so clean, man. Let's put some luggage down. Some, some bags of sand. Something. Something. Got the highway up here as well, which is pretty cool. Get down here. You got two bridges. Very slick. I believe both of these are still here um, today, IRL. Cut on through the canyon. It's very narrow. So hopefully you can kind of tell now that it that is, you know, it is a bit different um, throughout the line. Not saying that a lot of milepost routes aren't. Uh, Rio Grande Southern was pretty samey for the most part. It had some wide open areas at the pass. Um... But this I would liken to the Wasatch that Milepost made. It's just a different color palette, basically. It's, you know, geography-wise and operation-wise, you know, somewhat similar. Very narrow canyon. Another bridge. These cool walls built down here. Very nice. Assuming a, a coal mine or iron mine or something. Building. Neat looking little area. So the, the thing I kept whining about in Redcliffe, the, the fort, would have looked like this. Like a bunch of this uh, and, a, and a really notable shape on the uh, bank of the Eagle River. Another tunnel. Just trying to get to Minturn. We are almost there. We are almost there. So you kind of break through that gorge uh, and you're kind of wide open again. And this is Minturn. Minturn sits uh, about 10,200 feet or 50 feet or 30 feet, 10,000 something feet. Uh, and this was named after Robert Minturn Jr., who was the vice president of the Rio Grande at the time. So how nice was that? They're like, here, we'll name a town after you. And they did. Uh, the railway basically arrived here in Minturn in the late 1800s, like a lot of this stuff, of course, turning it into the bustling town for mining and railroad workers. It was very large at the time. Uh, now, today's standards it's it's like a little touristy town people come here to go skiing and things like that and hiking but you got a big old roundhouse which is nice it looks fairly clean again the the mixing with the the texturing you can see some kind of fills here and there which looks good i'll give it that oh that's not very nice <laughs> i know roundhouses can be weird uh in the editor like you got a couple mixed together so this is like an inherently new roundhouse almost the shape of it and there is some different coloring as well huh yeah it's like it's like some some movie magic going on here with it or something the big old coal loaders you got your water Several water stands here and there. It's a pretty good sized yard. This, of course, would have continued on to uh, Grand Junction. Not sure what this is. Maybe like uh, something to do with uh, like an ice house or something. I is not sure. Uh, you got some some livestock pens right here, so you can do some cattle, some sheep, and things like that. And it ends up here. So, all right, yes, Tennessee Pass. I mean, it does look good visually. I know it's still got lengthy, but I tried to keep it a lot shorter than usual, just kind of skipping around. 
you know, visually it looks good. I, I don't think it looks as good as like the Shasta line. I feel like the Shasta line was where Milepost peaked, but that is also more modern and more accessible with things still running there, you know, so I kind of understand that. Um, but like map visually does not look bad. I, I still don't think it looks as good as Arizona divide, which is the Seligman sub, uh, as well, but it's, you know, I'd say it's right, right, right about Rio Grandish, um, Rio Grande Southern, the last one that he made. So yeah, it still looks pretty good. Wouldn't say it's terrible. Wouldn't say it's great. It's kind of right. Uh, middling let's look at the stock all right stock showcase time guys uh yeah this is all the stock you're gonna get with the root uh tennessee pass line of course rio grand uh this is what you get so you're gonna get some gp7s and f7s uh a and b i'm not gonna go over those i feel like i've talked about gp9s gp7s gp40s in in videos till i could go blue in the face i think most of us, you know, probably well aware by now of early Jeeps and Fs and stuff like that. So we will go over the L131, but let's take a look at the stock first. You're going to get quite a bit. And again, sadly, um, some of this stuff is throwing me off a little bit. So some of it is obviously the Freeware Michael Stefan Golden Age Railroading stuff reskinned. And then some of it, I think, is from Wasatch, just reskinned. Uh, anyway, these are the uh, livestock cars, cattle cars. Clearly, cows in them and springs are unsprung. Looks like a clapped out slinky. Yeah, lettering looks okay. Could be a bit more high res, but it, uh, you know. It is what it is. Neat cars, though, like livestock cars. Down here, you're going to get your Pacific Fruit Expreheus. Uh, you know, vegetable, fruit cars, things like that. Which, again, American Refrigerator Transit Co. Uh, again, these were in Wasatch, if I'm not mistaken. So, some reskins of those, I think. Uh, just looking at the trucks themselves not you know not the best models but to be fair they're not ultra shiny and look ridiculous you know they don't they don't stand out like when you see it rolling by on the screen you're not immediately drawn to the friggin axle like some stock we get in uh train some classics so you're gonna get an early and late version of that you're gonna get some beamed lumber on a flat car you're gonna get some coal gondolers some shorties and some tallies. Uh, I think you're going to get some ballast fills and coal, of course. And then right behind the Alco, we've got all of the uh, continuing rolling stock. You're going to get so like boxcar stuff here, early and late DNRGW. You got the new ones over here, obviously, in the, uh, the late. Or, I'm sorry. These are early. Those are late. Wait. Now I'm confusing myself, damn it. These are the older ones, we'll say that. Royal Gorge, Moffat Tunnel on there. Scenic line of the world. These are the old ones. Wooden, of course. 40 footers. If it sounded like I was screaming there, it's probably because I was. Because being next to those horrible old sounds, uh, I couldn't really hear myself. Got some KD on here, some MKT, early and late. You got some different variations of these. Got some Missouri Pacific as well. Mopac, baby. The WP. The Ticklish Feather. Several of those. And then the rest, I just put those down there to run a train. And then over here, you got another flat car with stakes and wood. And you've got the rolled steel with them low guns and some more wood. That stuff is freaky looking. It's like blue dyed wood and then last and certainly most likely least uh the <laughs> the low-sided gondolas as well uh with very ancient fills my god Oof. 
Oh, ho, ho, ho. At least with Rio Grande Southern, like, the dude that made this route made all that stuff. You know, didn't use freeware from 20 years ago. Uh, but you got all these in different kinds of fields as well. And then you gotta get two cabees. Old Bay. And New Bay. Okay. GP7. Just like a GP9, but with a 7. Instead of a 9. Paint looks good. It's an old ass locomotive. This thing's been turned out more than a hooker in Philadelphia. I don't know. Like, they're just here. Uh, the F7, <laughs> same. You know, they look good. The deliveries look pretty good. They're, you know, standard, very mid standard. Look good. And then this chunky some bitch. The Rio Grande L131, standard gauge, 2882 articulated locomotive, built by Alco. Ten units total went to uh, the Rio, numbered 3600 through 3609, built 1927. And every damn one of them was scrapped. Heresy. Absolute heresy. Anyway, that happened in about the mid-50s. Now, these were known as the Chesapeake's, uh, the white designation, which is your axle uh, designation, Chesapeake's. Now, the DNRGW classed them by tractive effort. So it would be, you know, L131, and it would be times a thousand. So think of it like an RPM on a on your car's, like, dash cluster, your gauges, you know, same kind of deal. That's how, that's how DNRGW did it. Uh, and at the time, this was the world's longest some bitch. And by some bitch, I mean locomotive at the time of construction. Yeah. So all you big boy farmers out there, sorry, this one did it first, and looked a lot better. You know, big boy's still cool and all, but I'm, you know, I'm not gonna crap my pants over it. You know, it's neat. But anywho, 63 inch drivers. This son bitch weighed 649,000 pounds. Big boy, let's look at it. Right off the bat, I call it a big boy. What the hell is wrong with me? I just meant big boy as large person. Uh, right off the bat, looks green. It's got like a weird kind of green hue to it. On the old boiler itself. Now, you know, there's some pros and cons here. This isn't a high iron product where they basically throw the same shit in a blender over and over and over again, like stuff like that, and then put a different set of numbers and repaints on it and a new horn here and there. It isn't that, you know. JL, aka Milepost, made this thing all new, right? For this route, obviously. So it wasn't some quick, crappy kit bash like DTM and High Iron love to do, which is admirable very very admirable you know that kind of stuff that's old that's old news that's yesterday this is today mind you it is all brand new and it's handmade but it is not smoke box high definition quality it's not trying to be either this is an all-in-one package now some people say this looks like msts era stuff it kind of does you know, there's there's some bits that look good, but the biggest problem with this thing, and, and like the uh, the K27 on the Rio Grande Southern map, is the texturing. If the texturing was just, you know, bumped up a little, little bit more, you know, it would just, it would take it miles, miles above what it looks like now. That being said, it's still way better looking than anything DTM has made since DTM has been DTM. So that's a given. But, you know, it could still look better. It just, it looks very chalky, you know, if that makes any sense. It looks very, it looks like a low grit sandpaper or something. It's just, <laughs> it's hard to describe. I can't think of a valid description, but, uh, you know, it, it's decent. It's decent. You can see some nuts and bolts and plugs here and there. It's just not the best texturing. 
uh, as you can see here. Some of the, you know, the rods and, and things like that, you, you can't see any differentiation between any of it. It looks like it's all one uniform piece. Um, you know, so, so grease up and soot up some of that stuff. The wheels look very tiny for some reason. Maybe it's just me? I don't know. They look very narrow or like thin or something. They, they seem like they need to be chunkier. And I, I don't mean the overall driver size. I mean mainly like the width of the axle rim. If that makes any sense. Here's your front pilot right here. So the way this works is like a lot of other big steam locos in uh, Train Some Classic where you're going to have to hunt that down in the editor and place it. And then you place the locomotive and then the tender. Because I know, you know, I can see the steam reviews now. It doesn't have the, the leading axles. You know, because they didn't look for it. Or they didn't read a manual. It do be like that. But yeah, I don't know why that's green. It doesn't look the best. Um, smoke box has got some detail. It's, you know, it's funny. It's like there's detail here, and then back here, he just kind of went, eh, screw it. Need an ash pan down yonder. Or the flu. Yeah, I mean, it does have a dog box on the back, which is cool. Or dog house, whatever you want to call it. Got the numbers on there, the capacity. Rio Grande. Yeah, so just exterior visual looks wise. It ain't the best, but it sure ain't the worst either. It's very very middle of the road and I kind of expected that but I tell you what if you have got the smoke box heavy challenger you can run its Rio Grande version on this map with great success so there's always that option Yeah, the pipes, I mean, they just, like, the, the the model itself looks good. It's just the texturing could could use some work. Steps look pretty good. Seeing some weird fighting going on there within the model itself, I guess, maybe. I don't know. Weird headlight. The smoke. Big old chunker stack with no hole. That sucks. Got your number boards on the side. Were these green? Am I totally full spectrum? Or they look green to me. Maybe they were green in real life. I don't know. I wouldn't think they were. Here's your whistle and your bell. And let's run this son bitch. Yeah, visual looks department, I'd say it's like a 6 out of 10. You know, texturing would go a long, long way. And the wheels, the drivers just look very funny. I don't know what it is. Uh, I tell you what I am going to do real quick, though. We're going to get this son bitch out of here. Because I'm tired of listening to it. We're not going to be looking at those, by the way. It's just another F7. Zero interest in those. Sorry if you were wanting to see those. My apologies. And then we're going to click this on, bitch. Get it on out of here as well. Of course, I could do the power of editing, but I am extremely lazy. And I suck at editing. So we're just going to do this. Goodbye. All right, now we can hear 
the chonker the l131 now there are tonnage ratings uh i would like to add there are tonnage ratings in let me turn the game volume back up here sorry there are tonnage ratings in the manual that show you what can be ran uh so i'm gonna go ahead and cut off some of these cars because i tested it earlier and i did have some trouble let's go ahead and apply the brakes let those cars slip away very sad for whoever's down there wait did they did they actually break apart my lord man dude this thing is just moving straight moving please stop You can definitely tell they've got the nicer rolling stock sounds, so that's a plus. That's a plus. I know he uh, added some new rolling stock sounds with the um, ba -ba 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 Rio Grande Southern stuff. Man, <laughs> I was just looking at that uh, airline. Gosh. I mean, I know you're not, like, right up on it, but, you know, just little things like that. When you got a, a, a collection of them, it's, it starts to add up, you know? Dude, stay unbuckled. Thank you. All right. So we got a collection here. I have no clue how much. We'll take a look at the headlight. It looks old. It doesn't really do a whole lot. It's got that horrible paper texture to it. Like old parchment. But it isn't bright white with the power of 10,000 suns and it doesn't have a shitty glare or flare so that's a plus we are in there like the swimwear and it is very loud I'm just gonna boot that sound down a bit here all right we got the safety's pissing let's go ahead and get our uh reverser totally forward it is pitch black in here i cannot see squat another you know poor texture thing so i'll put the contrast up or down actually let's see what was that what's that cab light okay so just l doesn't work cool very neat what's that headlight light up lamps what the hell does that mean There we go. All right. Uh, can't open those. Oh, you can open that. Ooh, that's greasy. Look how quick that shit moves, man. Now I can't grab it. Oh, there we go. Yeah, very, <laughs> very greasy. Holy crap. <laughs> those things move so quick. So quick. It, um, it's a, it's a big ass firebox. Um, you know, it's, it's just very basic looking in here. It's, um, it's pretty much how mild post stuff has looked. The tender doesn't look too bad. Some of the detail back there. Again, a lot of it is, is the, the texture with this firebox. You change the texture on that firebox and some of the piping here. It's a different ball game. Different ball game. All right. Let's throw the reverser forward. Release the brakes. We're gonna start rolling downhill, which we're probably gonna do anyway. Full power. I'm tired of hearing that Jeep. Let's go. Got your sight glasses up there. We'll find out quickly if those actually work or not, because I am horrible at operating these things. Just waiting on that brake gauge. What is that noise? All right, we go. 90-90. Alright. 
Let's hear it, baby. Dude, that doesn't sound too bad. The initial chuffs. I mean, it's double chuff. Let's try that whistle. Bro, that is vine boom bassy. <laughs> Holy crap. <laughs> I like it though, man. Cause it ain't, you know, it's not smoke box, which sounds epic, but it sounds all right. Honestly, that whistle sounds like the one from the K27 on Rio Grande Southern. I think it's the same thing. Did these engines use the same whistle? I have no clue. I really don't. It sounds okay though. It's a nice uh, sample, I guess. There's your cax. Bro, that thing is bassy as hell. Holy crap. Yeah, sight glasses do be working because I am pissing in the wind. You know what? That is Smokebox, aka Mike Rennie, exhaust particle slash effect. I, I know that, that look. And I'll be a son of a biscuit if it's not, because that looks just like the uh, particle effect from uh, Smokebox stuff. It's just not very long. Again, that's what she said. Haha. <laughs> You know, you don't get a trail. Check out the views. Bubble, 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 bubble. What does he even get in the doghouse? I don't think he can. Boot. Alright, so it's a 1% grade here. I don't know the tonnage that I have. I should probably have two of these suckers. Or a diesel helper. So I really don't know. But what I do know is Papa wants some speed and Papa wants some speed now. So Papa gonna cut some cars in the middle of the yard and let them go flying. Don't you recouple, damn it. Yeah, it ain't that heavy now. Come on, meow. I've also got it on auto fireman, I think. Um... I don't remember if, if since uh, Mike Randy did the scripting on this stuff, it's AI by default. Real car sounds don't sound too, too bad, though. I'm, I'm going to try and get a nice... Uh, going to try and get a nice run going here and uh, do like a full speed sound deal. I also want to try and conserve some of the steam... <laughs> that was a joke, by the way. It's climbing, though. Ba boom, ba bum, ba bum, ba bum, ba dum, 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 ba dum. All right, while we're building some speed, I'm gonna open the manual real quick.
Dude, that it's almost like too bassy. I couldn't think straight. And at a distance, it kind of sounds crackly, like it was a, a low, low bit audio sample or something. I know not. So as per the manual, I found it, um, the L131 can handle 3,000 tons, Buena Vista to Tennessee Pass, Minturn to Tennessee Pass, which is what we're currently doing, it can only handle 1,350 ton. Mine got. That is not a lot. Oh, and apparently there's a performance report. Control shift, I think? Or con control shift R? Yeah, okay, so. Kind of like the uh, searchlight stuff, which is nice. Uh, 1200 feet, 1600 tons. So we're like right on the edge, actually. But, you know, just like Rio Grande Southern and the K27, these were not super easy to operate in the game. And I'm failing poorly, poorly. I'm still looking at the manual, seeing if I missed anything. Um. Oh, the bell. Yeah, it sounds like the same same bell from the Rio Grande Southern route as well. All right, let's uh, slow her down here. I didn't have it running, did I? I did not. We're going downhill. You know what, though? We'll probably get more speed going downhill than we will uphill. Jeez <laughs> uh, Louise. We'll be able to hear some stuff. You should be able to twist everything, though. Injectors, blower. There's a stoker. Should probably turn that back to where it was. <laughs> Let's see. What do we got here? What do we got? What do we got? What's this? Give me, give me the icon. Show it again. There we go. Yep. Nope. There you go. Smoke deflector. Cylinder drain cox. Cox. Yeah, it's it's gonna be about like the K27. Uh, those familiar with that. There's the blower. All right, let's go ahead and release the brakes since they didn't really do anything at all anyway. And we might be able to hear this thing at speed now. The brake stand actually looks okay. Yeah, it's just the, the firebox, you know. Just needs a bit more texture. Alright, let's just make sure we don't... Yep, that's exactly what we're going to do. So, uh, I've got a better idea. We'll just... Um, We'll just uh, run the loco light and just see what kind of speed we can get up to and not watch a train wreck. Okay, we're back. We have nothing behind us except for the tender. Let's go. I want to hear what this thing sounds like in full chat. Oh, 
Oh, there's a curve. Damn it. <laughs> Gotta get on the other track. We'll see how she does. So the one thing that stinks about the inside is you obviously can't see squat, uh, which is pretty much how it was in things like, I swear to God, which is pretty much how things were. Um, now you do have your head out, but the problem with that is your wind deflector or the mirror is in the way and it looks horrible. Um, you just like this, that's the view. You can't see squat. So the view could definitely be fixed as well. All right, now we go. No, open, open. Oh, son of a. There we go. Let's do a run by. Yeah, I mean, this thing sounds big. You know, and I, I feel like, aside from anything, you know, Smokebox made for Train Sim Classic, nothing's been able to capture that sound of a big engine like this at full chat. It's almost too loud. It's like, it's almost too bassy. It's too much depth. Like it needs more mid, like mids. Anybody knows, you know, treble, bass, mids. And kill it. And now, let's see if we've got any uh, rod chatter or rod clank or rod talk or whatever the cool kids call it. It does not seem to. I mean, you can hear the joint sound. The tender makes a bunch of damn noise. Yeah, I don't hear any, like, rod clank. Sadly, the uh, K27 Rio Grande Southern was the same way. But... Folks, I think that'll do it for Tennessee Pass. I feel like I looked at a broad amount of stuff overall, and also my dog is bothering me to go feed it right now. Uh, so I think that'll do it. It's It ain't great. It's not horrible. I'd put it right up there with the Rio Grande Southern route that came out. Um, you know, I'm sure there's a lot of things I missed. It, it seems to have some nice detail. The land itself, the map looks very nice. The rolling stock is not great but it's better than the average stuff that comes you know from any high iron simulations pack that's a damn given in itself um so yeah i think that's it it's i think it'd definitely be worth it on sale you know full price 40 bucks 40 dollars is a lot of damn money these days guys uh i don't have to tell you that of course um you know unless you're really into the rio grande and even then 40 bucks it's all about you and what you can do with your finances, um, obviously. But on sale, you know, sure. Because it's it's not a one-trick pony. And like I said, you could use mic boxes. Mic box. <laughs> Jesus Christ. Mic box. Mic box. Jesus. Anyway, Smoke Boxes uh, Heavy Challenger. Rio Grande Heavy Challenger on here. Which I intend to do. But uh, that's it, guys. Very, you know, it's it's okay. It's, uh, it seems like one of those one-trick pony type routes, which a lot of these are, but, uh, not bad. You know, it's, I'd say it's about par with milepost simulation stuff, but that's it, guys. Thanks for watching. Catch you next time. Bye!